Welcome to Online Anesthesia Video of the Week. Today topic is presented by Dr. Ramya Nana Chekar, MD Anesthesia. Working as an assistant professor in Department of Anesthesiology at Kanyakumari Government Medical College. She is being Nodal Officer of Pain and Palliative Care, Kanyakumari Government Medical College. Her area of interest are Ultrasound Guided MSK Interventions, Regenerative Medicine, and Cancer Pain Management. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Online Anesthesia video of the week. Today, I'm going to present about the components of pain pathway. Of all the clinicians, we anesthetists interfere with this pain pathway in our day-to-day -day clinical practice, more effectively managing patients with acute pain, perioperative pain, and chronic pain. Coming to the definition, the International Association of Study of Pain defines pain as an un unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with or resembling that associated with actual or potential tissue damage. Pain pathway is nothing but the sequence of events which are involved in neural processing of an oxygen stimuli. The various components of pain pathway are transduction, transmission, perception, and modulation. Transduction is nothing but the process by which a painful stimuli, in this case, the mechanical, thermal, or a chemical stimuli is transformed into a neuroelectric signal. Why it should be transformed like that? Because then only it can be carried into the central nervous system and perceived as pain. So who is doing this job and how it is done? Uh, for picking up a stimulus, we need a receptor namely the nociceptor, which is nothing but the sensory nerve terminal endings of A delta and C fibers. The transduction is accomplished via specialized ion channels located in the nociceptors, namely the transient receptor potential channels, the acid sensitive ion channels and the voltage gated sodium channels. The sensory system facilitate opening of ion channels in response to this noxious stimuli leads to changes in membrane potential and opening up of additional channels. The eventual depolarization of the afferent nerve generate a nociceptive signal and perceived as pain. The drugs acting at the level of nociceptors affecting transduction are NSIs, antihistamines, opioids, and local anesthetics. The capsaicin patch, which is uh, used uh, for pain, acts in this TRPV1 receptors. The perineural injection, uh, like 5% dextrose, which is used for uh, peripheral nerve entrapments, hydrodesection also act in the TRPV1 receptors and reduce pain. Coming to transmission, the generated action potential in the nerve terminal is propagated along the axons of the primary efferent neurons by A delta fibers and C fibers. The A delta fibers, uh, which are myelinated, carries sharp and well localized pain, whereas the unmyelinated C fibers uh, carry the dull and poorly localized pain. The generated action potential is transmitted into the higher cortical system through the first order neurons, second order neurons, and the third order neurons. The primary afferent neurons have their cell body in the dorsal root ganglion and terminates in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Up to this, it is called as the first order neurons. In the dorsal horn, the first order neurons synapse with the second order neurons whose axons cross the midline and the fibers ascend in the contralateral spinothalamic tract. Here, they synapse with the third order neurons at the level of thalamus. The axons project into the somatosensory cortex for perception of pain. So, the neurotransmitters involved during this transmission uh, between this uh, first order and second order neurons are glutamate, 
సబ్స్టెన్స్ పి అండ్ సిజిఆర్ పి ద డ్రగ్స్ యాక్టింగ్ అట్ ద లెవెల్ ఆఫ్ స్పైనల్ కార్డ్ ఫర్ ఇంటరప్టింగ్ ఇన్ ద పెయిన్ ట్రాన్స్మిషన్ ఆర్ ద లోకల్ అనెస్థెటిక్స్ అండ్ ఓపియాయిడ్స్ ద నెక్స్ట్ కాంపొనెంట్ ఆఫ్ పెయిన్ పాత్వే ఇస్ పర్సెప్షన్ ద సొమటో సెన్సరి కార్టెక్స్ is associated with sensory and discriminative aspects of nociception where the fibers from the third order neurons end the fibers uh, not only end in the somatosensory cortex but it also project into the limbic nuclei uh, which is responsible for the emotional component of pain uh, it uh, the fibers extend into the reticular formation which keeps us awake that's why uh, when patient is having pain uh, they also complained of sleep disturbances because the reticular formation uh, nuclei is stimulated the fibers also project into the contralateral periaqueductal gray matter uh, that is on the same side of the tissue damage so uh, this is the mri picture showing various various areas uh, that are stimulated uh, when a patient is perceiving pain so the drugs which act at the level of the central nervous system uh, in interfering the perception of pain are opioids alpha 2 agonist and general anesthetics till now we have seen how a painful stimulus is converted into an action potential transistored and uh, perceived as pain but the pain pathway is not complete one more component of pain pathway is modulation so what is modulation it is uh, nothing but an endogenous analgesic system that uh, present in our body it is a neural process that acts specifically to reduce the activity in pain transmission system and reduce perception of pain in healthy individuals that's why when some when same intensity of nociceptive stimulus in different individuals is not perceived and rated as the same one will report it as a severe pain and other will report it as a mild to moderate pain this is due to the endogenous analgesic system uh so uh, the endogenous uh, analgesic system is activated by the from the periaqueductal gray matter the descending inhibitory pathway starts and uh, it sends signals to the dorsal horn of the uh, spinal cord where the first order neurons coming from the axon nerve terminals a uh, synapse with the second order neurons there there will be a release of endogenous opioids like endorphins encephalins and dynorphins and they try to suppress the pain another important modulation system is explained by the gate control theory considering uh, the dorsal root ganglion as a gate uh, when the large uh, a beta fibers with, when they are stimulated it blocks the signals from a beta and a delta and c fibers example when one is having pain and uh, someone rubs the area we get a momentary pain relief uh, this is explained um, with the concept of gate control theory the clinical application of gate control theory uh, is uh, used in uh, tens and the spinal cord stimulators another uh, uh, important uh, inhibitory pathway is the segmental inhibition occurs at the dorsal horn of the spinal cord mediated by release of uh, inhibitory neurotransmitters by the interneurons present in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord so the drugs acting at the level of modulation are the antidepressants uh, uh spinal cord stimulators peripheral nerve stimulator tens uh, opioids alpha 2 agonist nmda receptor antagonist 
Another important system which plays an, a vital role in pain pathway is the autonomic nervous system because the pain signals from the thoracic and abdominal viscera are carried by afferent sympathetic fibers. Uh, the visceral painful stimulus example from pancreas is carried by the sympathetic fibers which pass through the ciliar ganglion which is present at the level of L1 but these fibers does not synapse here in this ganglion. Instead, they exit the ciliar ganglion and enters the uh, sympathetic chain through the splanchnic nerves and uh, it uh, in the sympathetic chain also, these nerves does not synapse with any other neurons. They just pass through the sympathetic chain and enters the mixed spinal nerve root by the uh, white ramus communicants. From there, it ascends further up and reaches the dorsal root ganglion. The, then through the dorsal root, it finally reaches the dorsal horn of the spinal cord where it synapses with the second order neurons like the somatosensory pathway. Coming to the visceral efferent pathway, the sympathetic outflow originates in the lateral horn of the spinal cord from segments T1 to L2. The preganglionic neurons, which is represented as the dotted blue lines, exit the spinal cord via ventral horn along with the somatomotor fibers through the ventral root and it then reaches the mixed spinal nerves. The, these fibers then join the sympathetic chain via the white ramus communicants. These fibers, uh, periganglionic fibers, neither end in the sympathetic chain or nor they join the gray rami communicants. Instead, they exit the uh, sympathetic chain and uh, uh, reaches the ganglion which is present near to the targeted uh, viscera. Uh, from there, the postganglionic fibers reaches the viscera. With the knowledge of afferent and efferent visceral pathways, we can effectively control chronic visceral pain due to malignant and non-malignant causes by various sympathetic blocks. Uh, for example, uh, the celiac plexus block for upper abdomen malignancy and uh, a superior hypogastric plexus block in case of malignant and chronic pelvic pain. This sympathetic blockade results in interruption of transmission by both afferent and efferent fibers. To summarize uh, this presentation, we have uh, seen the definition of pain, the various components of pain pathway, both somatic and uh, visceral pain pathways, the drugs acting at different levels, uh, interfering uh, the pain perception. So thank you for uh, watching online anesthesia.